With Califasane now, we take flight to an island that's truly for the birds and the people who study them. Now these birds, they all know you, but they never met me. Are they a little suspicious? Uh, yeah, they're very suspicious. <laughs> they, uh, they don't particularly like us either, though. Every year, thousands of seabirds, terns, come to these islands off the coast of New Hampshire. And every year, scientists like Liz Craig come too. We try to be nice, but they don't really uh, appreciate it. The birds may not appreciate it. You've been pecked? Oh, yes. Whoa. Daily. <laughs> but the researchers are here to protect them. Yes! And their Beautiful chicks. Beautiful baby. This is one of the only nesting sites, um, certainly the largest nesting site um, that they have. So in order for them to have this active breeding colony, it does require that people like us are out here making sure that this island is still available and doesn't get taken over by other competing birds. So when the chicks hatch, they can't fly. Craig and her research assistants, Alia Caldwell and Beckley Stearns, are studying two types of terns, the common tern and the not-so-common roseate tern. How close did terns come to extinction? Seabirds generally are the most threatened group of birds on Earth. There was a, a huge population reduction for the seabirds that we're talking about around the turn of the century, late 1800s, early 1900s, when these birds were actually hunted for their plumage. In the 1950s and 60s, environmental contaminants in the oceans again put the terns, especially the endangered roseate terns, at risk. So that's the species that we, we pay the most attention to. Each spring, the birds all squeeze onto these two tiny piles of rock, White Island and Seavey Island, to lay their eggs. With human development, we've certainly contracted the amount of space that is available for these birds. Even here, these birds usually have to share space with tourists, but not this year. If I was compiling a census of this island, it would be you three and a whole bunch of birds, right? Uh, yes, that's pretty much it. <laughs> because of the COVID-19 pandemic, this team of bird protectors was quarantined with the terns for about four months, beginning in April. No, we're not allowed to leave. You have ankle bracelets or something? How does this work? <laughs> I mean, there's an ocean and we don't have a suitable boat to get to the mainland, so. Being on an island, surrounded by nothing but birds, it doesn't sound so bad. A lot of people, especially my friends, were asking me if they could volunteer <laughs> this year. <laughs> it was a very popular idea. This program was started by researcher Jen Seavey. That's Seavey as in Seavey Island, named for one of her ancestors. The one amazing thing about COVID was that there was a lot less people on that island. So on the whole, it probably was good for the birds. Their data show a record number of terns, nearly 7,000, nested on the island this year. As for the other inhabitants... Okay. You think it was good for the researchers? I think it gave the researchers a really different experience. It gave them their own island. In that sense, it was all about the research. They lived together in an old lightkeeper's house. The outhouse. The outhouse. That stood the test of time. Updated with all the amenities of home, so or, or some of them. Yeah, well, this is a faucet, but just because it's a faucet doesn't mean there's running it's water. It's a decoy faucet. Yeah. Caldwell says on this island, everyone's competing for the best food. If you were to have an argument on this island, what would you be arguing about? Jalapeno potato chips. <laughs> Jalapeno <laughs> potato chips. As breeding season ends, it's time for everyone to leave the island. The terns head south. Our common terns probably are mostly spending the winter in Argentina. Roseate terns probably down in Brazil. So by the time they come back from their long distance migration in the spring, we want to be here to make sure that the island is still available for them. Until then, the researchers will return to their own nests. I'm excited to finally come off the island knowing that I'm symptomless and COVID free and that I could safely and comfortably share a meal with my grandparents. <laughs>